Welcome to this visual presentation in celebration of Red Squirrel Awareness Week. We hope you find what we share informative and interesting. Red squirrels are an endearing species and most of us will be familiar with its long ear tufts in the cooler months, its distinctive red colour and charismatic and comical behaviour. Where do red squirrels live? Well, in a dray, which is a nest-like structure which is often found tucked in somewhere up the main branches of a mature tree. These tend to be built from sticks and lined with fluffy, warm material on the inside, such as moss or that's been collected from the woods. The red squirrels have an appetite for nuts, seeds, berries, fungi, buds, flowers. Often one can find leftovers in the woods, such as nibbled conifer cones or discarded hazelnuts. Here is a selection of uh, Douglas fir from the top left clockwise, Sitka spruce, larch and scotch pine. Unfortunately, one cannot tell the difference between whether a red or a grey squirrel has enjoyed it. Baby squirrels tend to be born from early spring and even as late as July or August in some cases. Litter sizes can vary but can be around three or four kits and even two litters can be produced per year. And this is only really possible when the animal is well nourished and there's lots of natural food about. They're born deaf, blind and hairless and it takes about three weeks to grow some fur and for their eyes to open. At seven weeks of age they are mini adults and by about ten weeks they are independent of their parents. It is believed that they are kicked out of the dray and forced to fend for themselves at this time. Threats to red squirrel range from habitat loss natural predation this can also be domestic pets and road deaths but by far the greatest threat is the competition for resources and disease risks originating from invasive non-native species in other words, in this case, the American grey squirrel is nearly twice the size of our native red squirrel, stocky in build and has no ear tufts. Grey squirrels fare very well in our native woods, thriving especially on our large seeded trees such as oak, beech and hazel. And in a good year it can have up to three litters of kits, thus it outcompetes our, our red squirrel by sheer numbers. This is evident from the historical maps which show a relatively swift advancement of greys since their first introduction in the Victorian parklands in the late 19th century. What makes matters far worse is the squirrel pox virus that greys are a carrier of, but are themselves unaffected by. These lethal to our reds, who have not evolved in the presence of this introduced disease, it causes lesions and scabs around their mouths, their feet, in their eyes, blinding them and causing them to become malnourished and disorientated. Death use usually follows within about 15 days and there's no practical cure for it, just yet at least. There is some good news, as thousands of volunteers have for decades been working to protect red schools in the north of England. RSNE has been working alongside local volunteer groups since 2012 to help support this effort. Our main goal is to maintain red school range in northern England and to do so in collaboration with local communities, landowners and various other organisations. To do this, the work needs to be based on strong practical science. One example is our coordination of a systematic squirrel monitoring programme. This is supported where resources and opportunities allow with grey squirrel population management. Supporting and helping to empower local community-led conservation is crucial since by far the majority of practical conservation work is delivered by volunteers. Where possible, we endeavour to help with training, provide advice, facilitate landowner relations, loan or supply equipment, conduct data analysis in GIS, and make volunteers aware of funding opportunities where we can. Helping landowners to access environmental government grants is also an important component of our work. Not only does it help land managers to deliver various woodland improvements, but it also funds grey school population management and accounts for the bulk of RSNE ranger and contractor work. Mike will now say a little bit more about this. 
Hello, my name is Mike Denbury. Today I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about how we're working with local landowners and estates to utilise the countryside stewardship higher tier scheme to better improve habitat for red squirrels in the north of England. We're able to assist at every stage of the grant from applications to feasibility and delivery throughout the term of the scheme. We can advise on what options would be most suitable and what to include to greater benefit red squirrel conservation. This can make a significant difference to the acceptance scoring and agreement value. This scheme is not just for red squirrel conservation and we can advise on wider biodiversity improvements including suitable thinning and replanting schemes undertaking deer impact assessments and compiling management plans and reports. There are a number of capital items available and we can advise on which ones would be most suited. So this is a great opportunity to help conserve red squirrels in the north of England but also make significant biodiversity improvements. So if you're a landowner, a tenant or a land agent please get in touch with us via our website. We would welcome the opportunity to discuss the options available. RSNE also collaborates with multiple partners and academics on a UK scale to progress a host of red school conservation objectives. There are interesting developments in the field of biological control, with, for example, pine martens showing signs of greater predation on grey schools than red schools, resulting in positive shifts in red school, school populations. The dynamics of this is still being investigated, however, some conclusive science has already been published. There is also very promising research ongoing by the Animal and Plant Health Agency looking into using fertility control to manage grey squirrel populations. A grey squirrel feeder will need to be developed as part of this to make sure non-target species are excluded. The RSNE monitoring program was established in 2012, covering Northumberland, County Durham, Cumbria, the Yorkshire Dale National Park and parts of Lancashire. The program takes place in spring between March and May. There are other areas where the monitoring occurs more often, such as Kielder Forest and Thilmere in the lakes. Around 300 survey sites are dotted across these counties. The program would not be possible if it were not for the amazing dedication of an army of over 150 volunteers. The surveys are conducted mainly by using wildlife cameras and baited feeder boxes. A backup detection method in case cameras malfunction is sticky tabs attached to the feeder lids. These collect squirrel hairs which we then analyse to determine the species. And we have had all sorts of hairs to analyse, mice, pine martens and even badgers seeking out the feed. As is often the case with invasive non-native species, population management of grey schools is an unavoidable necessity when it comes to protecting our red schools. This will continue to entail lethal control by using live capture traps and humane dispatch methods, always following standardised protocols. Grey squirrel population management is a time-tested and proven approach which is evidenced through the continued presence of red schools in the north of England and a few other isolated locations such as Sefton Coast in Lancashire. The spring monitoring program also gives testament to the effectiveness of this management strategy. The challenge is not eradication of grey schools, at least not yet, but maintaining low grey school numbers. This not only has the effect of minimising competition for resources, but also by thinning out grey school population it reduces the risk or the probability of the squirrel pox disease being transmitted to the local red squirrel population. A good example in a study by Dr. Craig Shuttleworth in North Wales illustrated that of the grey squirrels caught on Anglesey, the number which carried squirrel pox antibodies had dropped from around 75% in 2002 to just 4% in 2010. Now let us have a look at citizen science and biological data. The data gathered by the monitoring program represents a fraction of all the data that we collate on behalf of the conservation community. There are three other main sources of data. By far the most of the conservation data is thanks to the 
more than 30 local volunteer community groups who share their records with RSME and to amalgamate it with the master data set. Conservation activity records are generated by RSNE rangers and contractors as well. These are logged on a mobile app, a mobile device, out in the field. This enables efficient and accurate location da data collection, which is then uploaded to an online database. This process saves the need of filling out forms and more time can thus be spent in the field. Lastly, there are public squirrel sightings, which are either entered onto RSNE's website, submitted on the Mammal Society's new Mammal Mapper mobile app, or sightings are submitted directly to local volunteer groups. The collective data now exceeds over 110,000 records and is an invaluable resource. It, for example, demonstrates how valuable citizen science is. It also gives confidence in the effectiveness of the collective work that we do. It influences government policy. It also influences government funding priorities. For example, the inclusion of red squirrel conservation and gray squirrel control in the countryside stewardship scheme. It also demonstrates a systematic and scientific approach to the work done. It gives context to the state, status of reds it is also a great encouragement to the conservation community to see how things are progressing. It also gives the public confidence that what the community is doing is making a difference. And therefore it's evidencing red squirrel range. It also acknowledges the extraordinary volunteer contribution to the conservation effort. More than 80% of the practical work is done by volunteer groups. In the blue areas on the map, you can see RSNE ranger effort and how it fits into the picture. The data also shows hotspots or problem areas. It highlights where grey squirrel incursion routes are and it helps us thus to effectively deploy or focus resources. The data also demonstrates the enormous scale of the collective effort. Although the national red list status of red squirrels is endangered, in the north we can demonstrate that we are holding the red line. The next clip is of an interview with a local volunteer from one of the groups in the north to hear a bit more about local conservation of red squirrels. Hi, I'm Mick Leeming, I'm a trapper, I'm part of the Squirrel Action Greenhead Gilsland group. I've been trapping grey squirrels for about 10 years now and in that time we've managed to maintain a few red squirrels in the area. We've lost some unfortunately but we haven't lost them all and we keep the greys at bay. It's a continual battle, uh, it's not easy but we do our best and it's heartening when we're getting reports every year of reds in places where reds haven't been seen for a while. So I think we're holding the line. So we're in a woodland uh, called Ballister Wood and uh, it's not that far from Holt Whistle and just off the A69. Um, Nick, you've been trapping here for quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, we, I have been trapping in this wood and I also trap on the Featherston Estate. Uh, they used to be red squirrels in this wood. I can think back to around about oh, 2010, 2011, and it was a really good place to come and see them. Unfortunately, um, we've lost them, but there's very, very few greys in here. Uh, there are greys on, there are reds, sorry, there are reds on the other side mm. of the valley. Uh, reds have been seen around Featherston Bridge. And there are reds further up the valley at uh, Cohen Wood. And so we are hanging on to them. So it's, uh, it's essentially holding the line. So you've got resident red squirrels here, um, but also greys that keep on trying to come into the area. And by maintaining them, or low numbers of them, and dealing with them as they try and come in, you're protecting local red squirrels? That, that's precisely yeah. it. Um, every year, I mean, we're filming this in September, 
and trapping is a, a waste of time at the moment because there's so much natural food yeah. around and with the leaves on the trees you can't shoot them much either so at this time of year the squirrels are dispersing mm. and the travel greys can travel huge distances and so they just they essentially repopulate what we've yeah. what we've cleared but in saying that people will say well what's the point well we're stopping the populations from building up to the point where they wipe out the reds it seems that the reds the reds have got very shy they used to be quite bold as i said this wood you could walk through it you could walk along the wall at the top and there'd be squirrels perched on the trees looking at you or you could mm. sit down and the squirrels would come and look at you the reds and it seems that the timid ones have survived mm. and the timid ones when the when the when the greys come into a wood it's as if the reds just disappear upwards mm. there's a wood further up the valley which was clear felled this time last year and or a bit earlier and i was i was trapping in there as the tree fellers moved in and i was getting greys and then as they started to fell the spruce plantation which I'd suspected there were reds in, but I'd never seen one or caught one. I caught five reds in the space of a few days as the habitat was being cleared. The reds were in there, but we just never saw them. Mm. And the sightings have been around Featherson Bridge, which the reds seem to have moved into the main woods there. And what do you do with the reds when, if they enter a trap? Oh, you let them go straight away, of yeah, course. Of course. Yes, <laughs> they get very cross. I yeah. thought it's, we'd just say that, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are released. Yeah, yeah. The traps, I mean, are, traps are checked twice a day. Twice a day. So, twice uh, a day. Um, and, and, and if you, I mean, I'm always very, very careful about that. Uh, don't trap in really bad weather in case you get a red in there. And, and even if you get a grey in bad weather, you don't want them to suffer. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, yes, I am going to dispatch that grey. But I, I, I don't want its last few hours in that trap to be unpleasant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the reds go bonkers when you get them in. They are so funny. I once had... I once had a red um, over on Blenkinsop and it was a trap on the ground. I don't usually trap on the ground because of badgers. And it, it, as I approached the trap, it started making a very strange noise. Mm. Don't catch many, many reds. And uh, when I got up to it, I saw there was a red in there. And I, I carefully let open the door for the red to leave. And it, it, it was very cagey about coming out. And then it ran up the tree at the side, got part of the way up the tree, and came down head first till it was eye level with me. I was still kneeling by the trap and it gave me a real mouthful. It looked at me, I made eye contact with this squirrel. It was four or five feet away from me and it just gave me a real mouthful before running back up the tree again. They're, they're, they're charming, hmm. charming little creatures. Amazing, yeah. That's really good. Um, Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Did you want to say anything about um, your um, work, uh, your volunteer work with Northern Red Squirrels? Sorry, yes. Um, mainly because nobody else would do it. <laughs> I, I've been chairman of uh, Northern Red Squirrels, which is the, 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 the voice of the volunteer groups in Northumberland. Northern Red Squirrels Northumberland There's a similar organisation in, in Cumbria. And um, my main function is to act as a mouthpiece between all the groups. I and mean, we've got 16 groups and the conservation bodies such as RSNE or the UK Squirrel Accord. So rather than um, your organisation or others speaking with individual squirrel groups all the time, I can collate opinions and pass them up, mm. which I think is much more efficient. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's something else I do, but more by default than yeah. anything else. Great. And how can people find out a bit more about NRS or where their local groups are? If you want to find, we've, we've got groups. We cover virtually the entire county of Northumberland, right the way up from Berwick down to Tyneside and across here to the far southwest. Um, if anybody wants to get involved, then simply uh, Google NRS Northumberland or Northern Red Squirrels Northumberland and you will come up with a home page and you'll be able to find out where your nearest group is and they'll be very glad of any support you can give them. It's not all about trapping greys, it's monitoring feeders, it's fundraising, it's doing all sorts of supporting work like that as well. So anybody who wants to volunteer, go to the website and find your local group. And for people who live in different counties, 
can they also join up or get information on the same website? You can get information on the website. I mean, in, in, in most, uh, we're starting to get groups going in at the top end of Weirdale and also the top end of Teesdale. We've got red squirrels there. The reds seem to cling on better in the real high valleys. Um, the greys don't like it. They move up sometimes, but they, they, they don't prosper. And so, yeah, we've got reds at the top end of Weirdale, top end of Teesdale, and we're trying to get some volunteer groups there. It's hard work running a group. Um, it, it's, it's, you need one or two volunteers who are really keen. And, uh, yeah, it's not easy, but, yeah, anybody who wants to do that, get on the website and contact me uh, or the Durham Wildlife Trust, and they can help as well. Yeah, and I think this, the same information is available for Cumbria groups as well. Oh yes, Cumbria. Cumbria looks after Lancashire, and also uh, Cumbria uh, speaks for other Red Squirrel groups down in Cornwall and places like that as well. Excellent, great. Thank you very much, Nick. My pleasure. How can you help red squirrels in your local area? Well, knowing where red squirrels or grey squirrels are is invaluable and reporting sightings couldn't be any easier. Either do so via the RSNE website or the Mammal Mapper app or via the Northern Red Squirrels webpage where you can find your local group and their contact details. If you live in a red squirrel area, you could provide supplementary feed. Please look at the RSNE or on an NRS webpage for guidance on how to do so responsibly. You could become involved with your local Red School group and there are many ways to help, from administration to activities out in the woods. All groups now have the necessary health and safety protocols in place to just, so just ask about these. RSNE also always appreciates support with the monitoring program, so please contact us if you would like to help to do a survey in your local area over the few weeks in the spring. And lastly, as Mike mentioned, we would welcome the opportunity to assist landowners in red school areas with our knowledge of the environmental grant schemes. So feel free to contact us as this is a good way of helping red squirrels. We hope that you have found this event informative and interesting and we invite you to contact us if there are any ways that we can help you to help red squirrels. Thank you.